Sisonke Bozwana, along with the CES Capital Organization, under the auspices of the Equality Justice Alliance with the Breaking Bounds Consortium in Botswana, presents to you a documentary sharing the experiences and questioning some of the issues around law enforcement, decriminalization, and autonomy of individuals that are engaged in sex work, those who are part of the queer community, and of course, the autonomy of exercising choice. I bring you three fantastic participants. I have Tosh, Letty, and Nelly. My name is Jimmy. And so to start off the conversation, I will definitely ask Letty since you are <laughs> quite engaged. Um, I think the first question is really around, you know, how easy is it to be different in a country like Botswana? It's not an easy question, <laughs> but let me just take it. Um, it is easy being in who you are in a country like Botswana because um, Botswana, first of all, is a, demo a democratic country. It's one of the, like, the world's peacefulest country and safest country, so I guess so. Hmm. And then Tosh, for you, in your experience, this is now an intergenerational dialogue. In uh, my experience, uh, as the founder of an organization that is basically looking at the rights of uh, sex workers in Botswana, uh, I feel that uh, Botswana have now accepted uh, sex workers' work, uh, even though we still have uh, issues around uh, our traditional leaders and our religious leaders. Therefore, I feel mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Nelly, can we say the same thing, particularly around you know being gender non-conforming, being gender diverse, and not necessarily fitting within the binaries, or just being trans as an individual? For the trans community, specifically in Botswana, it has been a difference because we don't, we are not really supported fully by the government in terms of accessing um, hormonal therapy and gender reassignment surgery. So it has been difficult accessing services because most trans people in Botswana are unemployed or are graduates, but then they can't get jobs. And <clears throat> that has also created um, economical difficulties for us to transition. Mm. Mm. Now, that's a very important aspect that you're bringing to this conversation because we all need money, right? Mm. And money is a critical aspect mm. of our be belonging, becoming, and even being able to afford, mm -hmm. you know, gender affirmative health care. So I think, you know, when we start speaking about money, we obviously have to speak about control. Mm. And control means that someone can actually be able to exercise choice, right? And so when we start speaking about choice, you know, we get, we, we, we tend to hear a lot of people speaking about, um, it's a choice to be engaged in sex work. Mm -hmm. It's a choice to be queer. It's yeah. a choice. So, you know, what's your perspective on that, Tosh? I will say there are many factors that lead to sex work. Yeah, I'm tired like unemployment. Yeah, we abandonment by kids, both women and uh, uh, male. I think I was born this way as well, and I I feel I I managed to express myself at a very late stage because of circumstance like the cultural background growing up in a religious family mm. all of those aspects building this person that i am so for me i had the choice to come out then the, and say i'm trans and i'm not gay you know and that changed then my narrative mm. yeah. and i think you know the fact that you're speaking about you know being trans and not gay is because a lot of people as a default will often be told they happen to be gay mm -hmm. and there's an assumption that they're gay. Mm -hmm. Not knowing that this is maybe a trans woman, right? Yeah. And so it's really quite important, you know, especially when, you know, when you're speaking, Letty, and you're sharing, you know, around someone, you know, questioning and not being sure. Mm -hmm. And that's a reality is that we don't always have the answers, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But then we're thrust into this world where we have to answer for ourselves mm -hmm. because we exist so why do you think we are being denied in law why are we being denied in policy because the fact that someone can sit there and say i don't want a same-sex intercourse no i don't want people who are having sex as a trade they are recognizing it they're acknowledging it, it, it exists. <laughs> that's why they're prohibiting it right so why do you think they need to police that um i would say uh 
asked Batswana, Rasanza uh, really modina ling, Ibile Richaba, eh, eh, Kanakiri, eh, shy. But Hela, what I can say, Gori, the, 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 the laws that are prohibiting uh, sex work. Hela, Gori. I agree the, the, the constitution and some of the penal code. I will talk about the, the section 155 of the penal code. Uh, it says you cannot leave from the profits of sex work. Mm. Yet, uh, not to me, it's just quiet. What I will just say, sex work in itself is not a crime. What is a crime? When you are living out of the uh, profits of sex work, for example, let's say, and uh, sex work. Where will they find the evidence? Mm. Uh, you don't just go to court to hear like, evidence. Where will they find the evidence? That is why in most cases, when sex workers are arrested, um, the, 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 they will attach molato uh, uh, to the sex workers. Like molato is one of the eye disorders. Because if you have any uh, policy hearing, uh, sex work is molato. So to me, uh, me mm, mm, we still have to review our policies. Mm. Hey. Now that's very important because similarly, homosexuality wasn't outlawed, mm -hmm. right? It was yeah. same-sex intercourse, mm. which really could have... And not, let's not even say same-sex intercourse, right? Because mm. they were saying carnal knowledge against the order of nature. Yeah. So a lot of people interpreted it as anal sex, right? Yeah. Which means it can even happen with opposite sexes. Yeah, exactly. So I think, you know, and, and speaking to that, Letty, I'm, you know, I'm really curious you know, there, there was quite a, a bit of a uproar online. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think you took it, you know, by the chin and you're just like, okay, hey, whatever. But, you know, there was a whole chocolate box trend. Mm -hmm. Take us, what, how, do, how did that feel for you as an individual? Oh my God. I remember I was at my mom's house. And my friend was busy calling my phone. I was like, what does she want now? Or when? So it took me by storm. I don't know how. It got there, but um, after like a few months, I reflected back and saw how it it went out. Eh, I feel like I was cyber bullied mm -hmm. for my personal uh, things to be posted um, on social media. Mm -hmm. But uh, thankfully, I'm a strong individual. I didn't let that break me or mm -hmm. just shut me from the world mm -hmm. and hate people. But then I felt it was wrong how it was executed. Mm -hmm how could the, the impact of that thing to not you get what I mean mm. yeah mm. now Nelly I want to ask you something because you spoke about confidence and that's something that obviously clearly helped mm. in terms of resilience mm. and a lot of people who are participating in this documentary are obviously very resilient individuals because yeah. they've survived so many different things yeah. you know you know what is it like for an individual who obviously doesn't necessarily have the tools the tools I mean information who doesn't have a support structure who pro who obviously is in an environment that is very intolerant and there's you know very harmful norms that obviously are existing you know whether it's tradition whether it's cultural whether it's religious you know so how, how do you w take us through that for an individual who happens to be you know gender diverse or just not conform I would say it's um traumatic and also very dangerous mm. because um, the journey of self-acceptance and self-understanding is a lifelong journey. Mm. So growing up I was once attacked um, at a restaurant somewhere in Kabruni and um, for me leaving that space after that attack by eight guys in the middle of the night because I had gone up with a friend. For me after that I, I got to the police station and when I got there I was told I was attacked I have to go back to the hospital and report it at the hospital I got to the hospital they were saying I was attacked because I was dressed like a girl and I was like but I identify as a girl mm -hmm. and in that moment my friend couldn't even explain it to them because I was hurt and I, I didn't feel like that was that should have been said to me because everyone expresses themselves the best way they know mm. how to. So I would say it's best that our, through such documentaries, our government have access to listen to our points and also document our stories the best way how if they don't know then they can come to us and ask us mm. how we'd like to be documented. Mm. Mm. You know, there's a term that speaks of state-sponsored 
stigma and discrimination. Mm. And it doesn't necessarily mean that it would be explicit <coughs> in law. It can also mean that it's allowed, right? Yeah. Where law enforcement is violent, mm. where economic participation is violent, mm. right? And you know, we're, 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 we're consistently then going back to these um, very harmful systemic issues of harmful gender norms, right? Mm. You know, there's an issue, and yeah. so within this, the, how do we survive in this perpetual cycle of violence? Tosh? Uh, firstly, Hela, as much as uh, Rebata uh, acceptance, resets mm. reacceptance. So we really don't mind worry. Kemango hali o tantongo ra accepte. Self acceptance is very important. Mm. And secondly, uh, we should uh, educate uh, the like I kene kibua this conversation or we need to be working closely with the traditional leaders religious leaders policy makers mm. so that but where we are coming from and uh, uh, everything uh, even the, the the general public they need our education because uh, Ghana, the, 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 the traditional leaders, the religious leaders, are people who have power. For instance, uh, right now we have a program whereby we sensitize the, the, the leader, both traditional religious and also the police, uh, because we feel that we ignorance power. Uh, education, mm -hmm. eh? Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe uh, this sex worker is doing sex work uh, because of circumstances. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I want to challenge that, Tosh, because I think you know there's so much education, there's so much research work that has been done, mm -hmm. there's so many organisations that have been working, but there's still a lot of violence in society. You know, we can speak about the influence of religious leaders at the pulpit, but at the end of the day, not a lot of people go to church, right? Mm -hmm. We can yeah. still speak about the fact that traditional leaders, yes, hold some clout. People don't actually go there, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, how then do you, how should we escape? Now we've heard an organizational perspective, right? Mm -hmm. But then now let's take it to a community level. Let's say, how do you then prevent uh, an incident? Yeah, cyber violence. It's not even, but it's violence, right? Mm -hmm. But truly speaking, I don't know how to tackle that question, mm. but I think the best answer to that is for Rona as individuals to be true to who we are, mm. to be true to ourselves. Um, identify as somebody who owns Inyana. the next person. I have to be true to who I am. I shouldn't get be I shouldn't be influenced by the society and or the community because mm -hmm. it's my life to live mm -hmm. and them to follow it whether mm -hmm. like it or not because mm -hmm. for example um maybe today I decided to go all flamboyant like this mm -hmm. it's not every day that I'm like this mm -hmm. and then I'm gonna get comments of oh you're beautiful you're, you're whatnot and then silly comments of like maybe like stupid guys but feel like they wanna belittle me and and step and stop. Um, I I always challenge my friends maybe who have been attacked for if how do you take that? Do you fight back verbally? Do you fight like action wise? In 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 in. Okay, but now my approach is to just ignore that n nonsense because mm -hmm. when now you're not you're not harming anybody you are happy as you are just keep on moving mm -hmm. a when i would understand if like the um, there's an influence of like um fighting and in, 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 but just keep keep moving forward tell her mm -hmm. don't retaliate these are some of the things that are very nuanced and it's very difficult mm -hmm. and we recently commemorated international trans day mm -hmm. of visibility and you know there is a certain cost and Part of that cost is violence, right? Mm. So, you know, for, from that angle, Nelly, you know, what do you think really must be done aside from the policy framework, mm. aside from individuals and self acceptance? You know, what needs to be done for us to actually get to a point where, you know, violence is not, even if we profile, you know, we must acknowledge that sometimes the people who are the most 
violent our uncles mm -hmm. the people who are most violent our parents mm -hmm. you know and these are some of the things that we need to acknowledge because violence it, it doesn't always look like a monster mm -hmm. um for me i would agree with um tosh with um policy reform and stakeholder engagement honestly because we have as i mentioned earlier we have documentation in our organization of mm. what um of, of violence mm. and that information would be useful in profiling and finding the common um the common denominator that brings that violence mm. that that violence um to the community <coughs> basically because the trans identifying people the sex worker the queer mm. person is is, the, is that very person who's in the community mm. So we need such documentation to be shared amongst ourselves and the government so that mm. we know what actually we are doing, stress that we are making and how then do we move forward. Mm. Now let me challenge because those common denominators are patriarchy. They are mm. abuse of power. Mm. They are people who exercise their privilege in the worst of ways. Mm. That's why we have a crisis now. Capitalism has taken over. Mm. The laws that we've inherited in colonialism, those are the common denominators. We've been, we've been doing this for some time, mm. right? Yeah. And we're not acknowledging the fact that the people who might be of good intent can still do harm. It doesn't suddenly mean what they're not doing harm. Mm. So how do then do we get to a point where people accept the proper use of pronouns. How do we get people to acknowledge, or you know what, maybe foreign sex workers need actual permits because we've been talking about evidence-based decision-making for a long time. We've done all the research. I think one rape is enough. I think one form of violence is enough. You know what, that organization is not going to save me. It might come back and maybe help me get legal remedy. It's not going to stop me from being abused at home. So this is where I'm sitting and I'm saying, then how do we dismantle the patriarchy? It's institutionalized. It's socialized. Mm. This is the challenge that I'm presenting. The people who have the power, they know this. They've mm. been educated. Let's not forget that. Mm. And yet, they are clearly benefiting from criminalizing bodies, and they're clearly benefiting from the cost that we incur in criminalization, whether it is economic, whether it is violence, whether it's psychological. Because then we're not allowed to, l to thrive in I our country. I would mm. say, for me, it's strict laws against stigma and discrimination of mm. any form and violence. But if you remove the laws, it doesn't mean um, equality. The laws are the ones that also create this inequality. Very true. Yes. Very true. So we need strict laws against stigma and discrimination and any form of violence. Mm. Because with strict laws and and regulations, really, um, then we do have um, a, a frame of what we are doing. Like we start with the stigma and discrimination for us to reach the case of inequality that has been discussed by feminists for a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then let tell me, you know, especially when we're talking about a world that is very digital, you know, mm -hmm. with the current epidemic that we're having now, everything is going virtual, the civic space is closing. But at the end of the day, you know, we're seeing that, especially in a country like Botswana, 160% cell phone penetration. We're talking about a community where there's at least 60% of our population, or at least the adult population, that is online, on social media, right? Mm -hmm. How then do we ensure that there isn't as much misinformation, that they, there isn't as much bullying, that there isn't as much violence? Especially especially for that young kid who might be confused, who doesn't know how to answer the certain questions that they're asking mm. themselves, and who can't even reflect in their own spirituality because of what the world is telling them. Mm. Ooh, that's a difficult one. I feel like a blonde right now. Because <laughs> 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 you guys are going in with lots of points and uh, mm. giving me like that digital transformation, your question puts me where um, as the world revolves and the misinformation mm. I feel like they're saying it goes back to the point of like um, the the law and regulations set us mm. mm. Because indirect, like her point she was saying, mm. is A, B, C, D, E, F, It can be better. And Lur Naral Banana, Bonabartang, Joza, Zasin Jalinjal, Rikai Twitter Hori. Hey, Lahat Larna, La Move. And 
it it says it's 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 moving with the world but it's not because our culture means so it's a it's a challenge right contradict at times and you can block but tolerance but awareness education because Mm. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, especially as Leti was speaking now, I was just sitting and saying, mm. well, it's so difficult, right? Mm. How do we then sit and separate the fact that maybe Gejuato? and the fact that because all of these come with a certain level whether it's social discrimination whether it's a you know ill treatment they come with a certain level of baggage and then i'm still supposed to be in a relationship that is violent get out how then are we supposed as civil society to respond to these multifaceted intersecting and dare I say, feminist issues, mm-hmm. especially when we know what the funding is sitting and saying, in the HIV test, full stop, make it all wrong, and I'm mad. Sister, what are you talking about? They are sex workers, they are trans, they are queer people, therefore, they are queer people, and they, 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 they are also paying taxes, and they are paying taxes, and they are paying taxes, uh, however, uh, the, the, these are the groups that experience a lot of violence, uh, either from uh, the, the, the general public or client the client uh, law enforcement, law enforcement the healthcare Invested. workers, mm. you can name them. But uh, mm. the next person mm. who, who claims to be having power, the Tata Zahori, ah. But as an organization, we are trying our level best to educate uh, the general public, our members, of which we feel that change. Because one, uh, sex working, I would say sex uh, doesn't. Uh, have boundaries or no boundaries mm. uh, because one how a sex worker you sleep with uh, somebody's husband somebody's wife mm. uh, somebody's daughter somebody's son because I agree uh, sex work is not only done by people Baba Emanko strategy Baba Modu office Baba Nyetu Baba Kai so I think Rebuela Hela Koko Komilaung Re review. For me, we, I, I've learned that you know a lot of issues have been sexualized, especially yeah. when we speak about the LGBTIQ community. Mm. And how do we start unsexualizing that? I think, for me, um, we are going to have to start with the realization of re- of gender in what it is. Mm. Mm. The gender that we've created as a societal norm. Mm. Social construct. Mm. Anyone who knows me knows I love doing this. So <laughs> I would like for you to think about telling, you know, what the government must start, what it must stop, and mm. what it must continue. Mm-hmm. Our government should collaborate and work with NGOs that represent everyone mm. so that we avoid working in silos so that when we when we start our policy reform strategies and re- policy review mm. um then we have enough information that covers everyone who is a motwana in Botswana. Mm. Yeah. so at least that's that's half start half continue because there, there are shortcomings uh, yeah. on, on so many levels mm. so then what must the government stop the government must stop working in silos okay. the government must collaborate mm. the government must take accountability for its citizens Mm. Yes. Okay. Um, Letty, you know, what do you think society must start, stop, and continue? Um, I feel the, the society should stop thinking they know better than themselves. The society should stop being God, trying to be the 
the, the bigger person, the bigger judge. That was a fantastic discussion with activists, community members and individuals who are making a change in their own way. Thank you so much to Tosh, Letty and Nelly. And this is the Equality Justice Alliance under the auspices of the Breaking Bounds Consortium based in Botswana, brought to you by Sisonke Botswana Organization and Success Capital Organization. My name is Dumi. Thank you.